three things I wanted to do in the book were, number one, make people happier. Number two, pass along the advice that I got from 50 comedians that literally saved my life emotionally and physically. And number three... And financially at one point. (laughs) And financially, oh yeah. But number three, make people aware of the legends of comedy from a past generation because comedians from that generation were simpler and happier and more fun. Some of today's comedians are angry and cynical and You're right, and you, you talk about that. Don't you find, Tommy, that the older comedians are not, I'm not saying old comedians, but the true comedians researched their profession, studied, oh, studied their profession? It. Absolutely. They watched everybody that came before. They watched the vaudevillians. They watched the burlesque comics. You know, people like Kenny Youngman and Milton Berle and Jack Benny and Jerry Lewis sat in the wings in vaudeville and burlesque and watched everything and learned every trick, and they learned how to have fun with an audience. You know, the, the strange thing is the, the essence of the word funny is fun, and the old line comedians knew how to have fun. Today's comedians can be angry and cynical and bitter, but the older guys knew how to have fun. And I really think that, you know, that's why they call me the professor of fun. I think that when you see a comedian, you should walk out of the show saying, wow, I had fun. It's true. And I like, too, what you said, that you you, you didn't surround yourself with the negative comedians. The no. comedians you knew, if they had a ball joke, they'd give it to you. Or they go, hey, I got a fat joke, you should use it. Or... And and you don't find that these days. They're not as giving. They're more it's nervous true. about, oh, uh, the, you're going on before me, and you're funnier, so I, I want to go on first. Or You know what I mean? Yeah, you shouldn't worry about com- competing with other people. Just go out there and do your thing, be your best, have fun, and the audience will have fun back. You said an interesting word. You said, you know, sharing. Sharing is so much of importance when it comes to happiness because when you share, okay, the the story I tell in the book, and I'll tell this. um, There was a great story that I watched one night when you're bleary-eyed. Remember when TV used to go off? Now it's on like 27 hours a day. Hello? No, that's how it used to go off. (laughs) Yeah, Connell Rad. But anyway, uh, uh, a preacher came on right at the end of the day, and he told this story, and I love this story, and that's why I put it in the book. He said, a man dies and he goes to a place he knows not where. And an angel takes him into a room, and it's a gorgeous banquet room with a big buffet with every kind of sumptuous food you could imagine. And two giant doors open and a bell rings. And in come scrawny, emaciated people. And the guy says, I thought this was heaven. And the angel said, no, this is hell. And he said, I don't understand. And the people come in, and they're angry, and they're bitter, and they're gnashing their teeth, and they don't eat. They don't eat any of the food. And the guy says to the angel, why aren't they eating? And the angel said, well, their elbows don't bend. So when they try to pick up the food and put it to their mouth, they can't feed themselves. So they just stand there and curse the situation, and that's why it's hell. The guy said, wow. Now the angel takes him to another room. And it's the same exact room with the same buffet and the same gold doors and the bell rings and in come fat, happy people. And he said, this is heaven. And the guy said, oh, I understand. In heaven, their elbows bend. And the angel said, no, in heaven, the elbows don't bend either. But when they sat down at the table and realized they couldn't feed themselves, they reached across the table and fed each other. That's the best definition of heaven I ever heard. That is, that's, that's terrific, and and it's so uh, your book too. You can go to his website and uh, say your website again. It's prof profcomedy dot com, or if you can't find that, just you know Google Tommy Moore comedian and you'll get to it. And, and know, they call uh, me the professor of fun, which is why it's prof comedy. Now, Tom, because, let's talk about your corporate work, Tommy. Let's well, I, I used to teach. Uh, how to relieve stress through humor, and I did it at AT AT&T and DuPont and IBM and American Express and all these big companies. And it's funny because I I started doing that because right out of college, which I went to please my parents. I knew I was going to be a comedian from like day three. But I was a teacher for like five minutes. Uh, And I realized, you know, teaching grammar school, that if I could keep kids interested, 
for five hours a day. It would be a breeze to keep adults interested for an hour and making them laugh. And I have such respect for real teachers who teach five hours a day, five days a week, because when I did it, it made me crazy. Kids will make you crazy. You know that. Like I taught arithmetic, and I said to one little kid, if you had 50 apples in one hand and 50 apples in the other hand, what would you have? He said very big hands. Every <laughs> hand. So, <laughs> They'll make you crazy. I said to one kid, if you had $5 and you asked your father for $5, how much would you have? He said, $5. I said, you don't know your arithmetic. He said, you don't know my father. Uh, uh. They'll make you crazy, little kid. I taught history. I said to one little kid, do you realize when Abraham Lincoln was your age, he walked five miles a day to borrow a book? Kid said, yeah. Now, on his birthday, they closed the libraries. Oh, they write the jokes you for nervous. you. <laughs> they write the jokes for you. It's true. Hey, the, the chat room has a question. Okay. okay. Uh, let me go here. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, let me get this um, uh, chat room. Okay. We have from Movie Attic Headquarters. That's the other radio show. Tomorrow, yeah. uh, you can listen to that, Tuesdays on Blog Talk Radio, Movie Attic Headquarters. She said, who is, hold on, who is the funniest comedian Tommy, Tommy met in person? Old school Buddy Hackett, new school Robin Williams. Oh, interesting, you said old school, new school. Go ahead. Yeah. I'll tell tell you the Robin Williams story, true story. Uh, We had this comedy club, a little side street, and every week we would worry about, you know, are we going to make the budget? Are we going to be able to pay the comedians? Well, one week we were sold out. We were thrilled. We were going to make money that week. What could be better than that? We found out. All of a sudden, the car pulls up. A guy gets out and says, can we buy four tickets? We said, we're sorry, we're sold out. He goes back to the car. And then he comes back to us and says, my friend in the car said that if you let us in, he'll do a free show for you. And we said, who's your friend? And they said, Robin Williams. We let them in, okay? <laughs> Robin Williams said, hide me in a side room because if people see me, the show's over. Everybody's going to look at me and nobody's going to look at the show. We were amazed that Robin Williams was going to do a free show for us because, you know, we were, we were tight on budget and there's no way we could have afforded it. I mean, he said, don't worry. That's not what it's about. It's about having fun and p- applying your craft and going on stage and doing it. And it made me think of a story when I was so concerned with money. This was like you know, 35 years ago when I was a starving comedian. And I'm going to a job in North Jersey at a Jewish senior citizen community center. And I'm in a broken down car with a duct tape door and it's 95 degrees out and I don't have air conditioning and I'm saying to myself, what am I doing with my life? I'm not making a lot of money here. Most of the money is going to be eaten up with road expenses and then then gas and tolls. What am I doing? And then I got there and I look at these seniors and they'd seen the greatest comedians in the world in their life and they're looking at me like, who's this guy? And I said, oh, I'm going to bomb. It's going to be horrible. What am I doing with my life? What am I doing with my life? I got on stage, and they started to laugh. And they laughed really good. And at the end, they gave me my first ever standing ovation. And I looked at two guys in the front who were in short sleeves. And I saw on their arms tattooed numbers. Uh. And I knew what that meant. They were survivors of the death camps. And I said to myself, All of a sudden, nothing matters. The money doesn't matter. The applause doesn't matter. The laughter doesn't matter. If I can make people who went through such horror be happy for an hour, I know what I'm doing with my life. And that's what you talk about in your book, too. Um, Another, uh, I know people don't believe I read every book that I do, but I do. Um, (laughs) I like that the, the, the part you said about savoring. Jack Benny. Jack Benny once said to George Burns, and George Burns told me this. He said, Jack Benny once came to him and said, George, I just had the greatest glass of water I ever had in my life. And George Burns was waiting for a punchline, but that was it. Jack Benny was just savoring a glass of water. And I thought to myself, if we could do that with any simple little thing, I mean, think about your senses, you know, sight, sound, hearing, taste, smell, touch, a lot of people don't have all those senses, but if you have one or more, use them. See what you can see, hear what you can hear, taste what you can taste, touch what you can touch, feel what you can feel, and enjoy every minute because it's there for you to savor. If you can savor as simple a thing as a glass of water, you can give yourself so much happiness in life that most people take for granted. And by the way, I've got I to say something. We were talking about happiness. 
I found out through Facebook last week was your birthday. Oh. So happy birthday. Thank you. And it's funny how happy is so important in our culture. Think about it. In the Constitution, it says life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Remember Tody Fields? Oh, I love Tody Fields. God bless. She talked about happiness. She had some great lines about happiness. She said well, she me, did, especially since with her, she lost her leg, and she continued oh, yeah. to perform and make fun of it. And she said, yeah, you have to look for happiness. She said, happiness is different things to different people. She said, to me, happiness is getting a brown gravy stain on a brown dress. <laughs> you know, she said, happiness is opening up a diet book and seeing that a banana cream pie is seven calories and a hunk of lettuce is 2,000. <laughs> she said, happiness is driving down the street and watching the guy who cut you off a mile back getting pulled over by a state trooper. Well, that's justice. <laughs> so, um, uh, everyone, you can go to Barnes & Noble, Amazon.com, The Professor of Fun, or Funny, Tommy Moore, Google that. Uh, go right to, to his website. Go ahead. Happiness, Tommy Moore. If you put in Happiness, Tommy Moore, you'll get to it. Or www.profcomedy.com, profcomedy.com. I highly recommend this book. And this book is a, it's not just, it's got some great funny stuff in it too. And he fools you because he gets serious and he gives you some laughs. And he gets, talks about life, then he gives you some laughs. And I love, uh, real, real briefly, how there's a story to look for, the Pat Paulson story. I'm not going to give it away, but it talks about all, all about believing in yourself and being an entrepreneur and how it can change your life. And this book is a life-changing book, so get it, a Ph.D. in happiness from the great comedians. Thank you again, and um, actually, why don't we leave on George Bird's, I think it was 164. Well, you know what, no, let me leave on one other thing, because this is the way I, I end every show I do, and this is my favorite quote. I say to people, you know, today we've had some music, because I do sing along, and we've had some magic, because I do goofy magic tricks that don't work, and we have some laughs. I said, if you remember nothing else, please remember this. There's more music in the fact that the waves lap up on the shore than in all the songs ever sung. There's more magic in the fact that the stars light up the sky than in all the tricks ever invented. And there's more laughter in the funny, silly things we do every day than in all the jokes ever told. Learn to listen for the music. Learn to look for the magic. Learn to hear the laughter. And every day you'll have a ticket to the greatest show on earth, your life. God bless you. God bless you, too, Tommy Moore. Get this book. It's an inspiration, and it's funny. The quotes are very uh, good. You got somebody you want to pick them up? Buy this book. It's a terrific pick-me-up. All right, Tommy, thank you for being a guest today. Thank you. It went so fast. Thank I know you. it did, Tommy, but that's because you're so funny. Thank you, the wonderful Tommy Moore. Dr. Thank you. Feel good.